Hello everybody and welcome to another Unity game development video and today I'll be um, talking about something that probably everyone who's ever made a game that uses a rigid body character controller has run into and that is the type of simulated friction issue where um, if you are moving into an object using a rigid body um, when the game is enacting some kind of force onto the character towards that wall the character will actually cling to the wall and it'll mess with your movement. So right now if I walk into this wall and I start tilting the camera while holding forward, um, my character wants to move forward here and you can see I'm moving an incredibly small amount. Um, and if I turn it, I'll move a little bit faster, but also if I turn it and move out, the character will bump into it. Um, and this is most noticeable with um, jumping behavior and kind of how characters interact with walls while they're jumping. So if I jump into the wall, you can see that I am hovering there for a second because um, the character and the script is trying to add force onto the character into the wall. And that's an issue because obviously um, with the rigid body and some kind of collider, uh, this is a solid object that we're not going to be able to go through. So if I move into it, um, we get caught right there float in one spot and then fall um, happens the same if you jump into it at an angle and obviously we don't want the movement of our game being uh, interrupted just imagine if you're playing something like uh, Doom Eternal where you're obviously jumping and dashing and doing a lot of things like that and you're jumping around fighting enemies and then you happen to jump and just touch a wall uh, there goes all your momentum you fall to the ground it's just not a satisfying behavior even in um, you know, less of like a hardcore Twitch shooter like that, less of something like that, and more like just a game that you might be playing with your friends. Imagine if you're all jumping around in first person, uh, it kind of breaks your, you know, in the moment feel, fun, and your immersion if you can't even jump next to a wall without getting stuck. Um, and if I walk into it like this, if I'm already walking into it when I jump, uh, we're not going to get anywhere near the full jump height. So as you can see, I'm jumping. You can see in the game view on the right, I'm barely going up. There's a reference on the wall here. And um, on the left in the uh, scene view, I've set it up where it uh, shoots a sideways ray to kind of show the jump height. So if I jump there, you can see that that's the maximum height of the jump I should be getting. But if I walk into it, I'm getting something less than half of that so it's obviously an issue um and i've set up a way that will take care of this now if we look down into the console you can see that we're getting some kind of floating point number that seems to always be less than one and what's actually happening with that is if you look into the scene view you see those um that kind of array of um, rays that are coming out from the character. Some are red, some are green. The green ones are hitting a wall or an obstruction, and the blue line that's coming up is the um, average, like inverse angle of those. So it's taking the vector of every single time one of those rays hits the wall, averaging them out and getting the opposite angle. So um, it's shooting it directly out in that point, and you could probably say to me, well, why wouldn't you just get the normal of the object? Well, if I go up to the edge of an object like this, um, I can get variations of the angle as it kind of uh, turns around like that. So that's useful there. Um, that is something I go over completely and more in depth in another video. If you're interested in that, go on my um, account and check out those videos there. But I am just pointing this out um, because this is the method I'm going to be using. You definitely don't have to use this method, and I'm not trying to confuse you. Um, uh, I'll just suggest a much simpler method as opposed to this. This is just how we're going to get the angle of the wall or the obstruction. So um, the much simpler method, um, and the only reason I have this is because of um, I used to have a wall jumping script, and it was useful for that. Um, the reason, or not the reason, but... Um, a more simple way you could do that is you could have a ray going out from the direction of the uh, the direction in which the character is moving. So if I go into my player and I have this move vector reference, um, if you look down, oh, that's not the correct one. Where is it? Move direction. 
if you look at the move direction, um, that blue arrow, which is basically the forward vector, is always pointing in the direction that my character is moving. And you could um, look up a few ways to uh, find that. Just look up um, how to find direction of movement. You could just Google that or look up a YouTube video. Um, the way I did it is I calculated the transform of the um, character in one instance, weighted a frame, and then calculated that position again, and then got the difference between those by subtracting them and getting the vector between them. So um, basically you get the uh, you know, direction that the character is moving. Um, that is useful in this instance because uh, we want the behavior of this getting caught on the wall to stop uh, not only when we're looking at it, but if I'm strafing into it, we don't want it to happen either. So um, what I've set it up for this is that when I am moving, it uses the vector of this, but when I am not moving, it is using um, this move vector object. And that should always be set to, where is it? Well, move vector reference, there we go. That is always set to the forward angle of the character. You can see no matter where I move and I'm looking around, it's still looking forward. So basically a simplified version of what I'm talking about is you would want to calculate which direction the character is moving, shoot a ray out, and then you can grab the angle between you and the wall that way. And that's important because what's going on in the console down here is what I'm actually doing is I'm grabbing the angle between me and the wall. And for simplicity's sake, I'm dividing it by the maximum that it could be. So um, if you look going directly into the wall, this is zero degrees. And if we look to the right or left um, directly adjacent to the wall, uh, sorry, parallel is going to be 90 degrees. So if I divide that entire thing by the highest uh, value it can be, which is 90, we're going to get a value between zero and one. So this is going to be zero. This is going to be one. Um, and you can see in the debug console down there, uh, this is almost zero. It's a very uh, somewhat precise floating point number, which isn't necessary. But um, if I turn and I walk into it, you can see that we're getting closer to one. So I'm walking forward, it's a zero. I'm turning, we got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And that value is gonna be useful in a second. So if I get out of play mode and I go into our script for player movement, which is right here, um, I will turn on the function that is going to correct this. So you can see what it does first and then I will explain. So I will get rid of these commenting lines. So we're basically finding out if the character is moving into a wall, we're going to perform these actions instead. So if I go back into the game, it should be working now. So if I press play, um, and very quick anecdote, uh, I'm going to, you're going to see me shoot as soon as I get into the game. Um, I'm having an issue with my game where, um, all of my inputs in the game screen are also being detected outside the game. So if I were to press F, which actually performs a function in the game where I drop my weapon, um, this, uh, scene view will try and focus on whatever I'm trying, whatever is currently highlighted. So the uh, subfolder of don't destroy and load, it's going to try and focus on all of those objects, which is really annoying. Um, I can't find a solution for it. Maybe we'll just fix it in the next update, but it's something that's only happened with this version of Unity because I have had a perfectly working build of you know this working in unity and then i updated to the newest version now i have this issue um i've already reported it to unity so hopefully they'll fix it so i've added the new behavior i'm going to walk directly into the wall and i'm going to jump and i am perfectly slippery i'm still going all the way up the wall and i have the normal behavior of a character controller not uh inhibited by the like simulated friction of walking into a surface and if I turn, I can walk along the wall. Um, I have it set up in an interesting way so that you still get kind of that walking into the wall type um, kind of behavior. But what's happening is um, it is 
kind of making that movement move along the wall and the move speed that is controlling the character is being controlled by that kind of uh, value that I showed you down there in the debug menu. So basically um, that value that's zero right there, I'm going to be moving at 0% speed and then um, it acts as kind of a multiplier that gets us back to the original default movement speed as we turn towards the wall. So if I look into the code, I'll be able to show it to you. If we're not moving into the wall, we're just going to use our regular velocity and our regular movement system. Um, but if we are moving into the wall, what is normally the movement speed of the character controller is going to be multiplied by that approach angle divided by 90. So the approach angle um, is what's being determined by those rays. So as I am standing directly by the wall, it is telling me that the angle is going to be 90 and divide that by 90 and we get one. Uh, I mean, it's telling me the angle is uh, roughly zero or whatever. So um, when I'm standing there and looking directly at the wall, uh, we are going to be multiplying the movement speed by zero. So if we're looking directly at the wall and we're trying to move forward, we're actually not going to move. And um, I will set it up so that it does not work with rigid body um, objects. So obviously you can walk into crates and stuff like that and knock them over. Um, I'll have to keep that in mind. But for objects that we know are definitely going to be static in the environment and the character should not be able to walk into them or move them, uh, this is useful for that as well. So um, I think the best way to find it right now is to just look for the approach angle because this and the actual function are the only ones that use it. So there it is on the bottom there. We can scroll down to it. So um, this is the function that is checking for those wall angles. Um, it's shooting on an array. Every single one of those uh, lines you saw in that kind of skirt around the character is actually a single ray um, being repeated. So it is shooting the ray, rotating the parent object that contains that ray um, sensor point, and then it's shooting the ray out again. And it's doing that like every frame, and it's actually not um, intensive at all. So it's pretty good. Um, if we go down to the approach angle, uh, right here we're getting an average, and we're getting a reflection vector, which isn't uh, exactly used, but we do need the approach angle. So um, I guess the approach angle would be the move direction of the character. So that uh, transform dot forward, whichever direction that is facing in, and we're getting the vector three angle of that and the negative reflection vector. And we're getting the negative reflection vector because um, this script already takes the negative vector of average of all those um, lines that come out of the wall that detects that, um, that vector there. So we're getting the opposite angle of that shooting out and we're getting the vector three angle between those. And what we wanna do is we want to set a maximum angle in which um, this behavior is going to work. So we don't want this behavior to work in a way that if we are walking along the wall, we don't want this uh, uh, number to affect our movement speed at all. So if we're just walking along the wall without kind of angling towards it, it wouldn't make sense to affect our movement speed. Um, not only would that be unnecessary in the sense that we would just get slight variations in movement speed, which would be bad for kind of consistency's sake and speed running in some instances, but it's also unnecessary um, additional calculations. So um, if the approach angle, which is the angle we're getting from all those sensors, is less than the maximum angle that we set and we're actually getting some hits using the wall detection uh, setup then into wall which is this bool here is going to be set to true when this bool is set uh, to true we are going to use that uh, multiplier for our movement speeds um, if not it is going to be set to false and that's pretty much everything that controls that we use that information to determine if we're going to use the function and we're also getting the um, approach angle out of that. So we can use all of that to um, kind of, you know, affect the movement speed. And that is also useful for right here when we have the approach angle divided by 90. The reason we do that, as I told you before, the maximum um, 
kind of angle that we could get out of it is 90. So um, if we divide it by the maximum value, then we get uh, a value between zero and one. And that's very useful here because um, if we do not want the um, character to be moving and we want to multiply it by zero when they're walking directly into it, then we'll multiply it by zero because um, that's what we'll be getting from this information here. But as we turn, um, it'll multiply by one once we're at the most extreme value. And that's very useful because the normal movement speed multiplied by one is just the normal movement speed. So we're getting a nice smooth gradient between the um, desired effect and the original movement speed. So it works very well in that instance. So um, hopefully that's useful. Hopefully I explained it in a way that's easy to understand. Um, I will have some more videos coming out soon. Um, I had to talk about the new system for reflecting shots for the weapon. I have a random number generator that determines whether or not the shot will reflect and that value is um, affected by the angle in which the shot hits the wall. So um, the more you know angled it is, the higher chance of it reflecting and if you're shooting directly at a wall, it's not really going to reflect it. And that's pretty interesting. I've added some crouching behavior, which needs its own video in which you could crouch jump, which I think is really cool. Um, and I'm going to be talking about those in the near future. Um, if you like the video, please like it, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Um, I have my link tree link set up on my YouTube account. If you go there and look to the top right, it should be there. That's all the social media stuff I have. You could go follow me on those and maybe retweet, reblog some posts that you think are interesting. Um, that would help out a lot. Um, but what would help out the most, obviously, is just, you know, subscribe on YouTube. Um, I plan on posting all my videos here, all my informative stuff. So if you like what you saw, uh, please do that. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Um, I hope that I could actually help you with your project that you're working on if you're running into the same issue. Um, this works really well for me, so I hope that it did help you because when it's kind of a pain in the ass to try and look up this issue um, and I kind of just solved it myself and hopefully if enough people see this and enough people have that issue they can be led to this video and find some kind of solution on their own um, so you know help make that happen okay have a nice day and uh, keep making games <laughs>